In this video, we'll be looking at several methods for forecasting. The first is called a trend model, and that just fits a simple straight line to the data. We also have a quadratic trend model, which will fit a parabolic curve to the data. And when you're using different methods and you're trying to get the best possible fit, you can use a formula for mean square error. Uh, the formula here, shown in the green box, uh, look in parentheses. It has you take your actual data value, which would be like these figures for production here, has you subtract your um, y hat value, which is your predicted value, which is, you know, what we'll be coming up with. And after subtracting, we square the result. Finally, we sum up all those individual values, and in order to get a mean or an average, we divide by n uh, the number of pairs of data. Of, I'm sorry, number of pairs of values in that subtraction. Now, in showing you the Excel, the Excel instructions for these, I'm going to take a rather cautious approach. Depending on which version of Excel you have when it was last updated, you may have simpler keystrokes than what I'm going to show you. And although I'll, I'll briefly mention those, the technique I'll use should work regardless of what value, uh, what um, version of Excel you have. So let's look first at a trend model. What I'd like you to do is first select all these values under the trend column. Now, without clicking anywhere, reach for your keyboard and do an equal sign. If you've done what I said, you'll still have this whole column highlighted. If you click first, you'll have unhighlighted it. So while it's highlighted, uh, search for the trend function. Just T-R-E-N-D. And let's pull that up. And it says known Y's. Well, Y's are our data values. So Y's would be these production values. Don't select the label production because we have no way of telling Excel that we selected a label. And I do a comma. And then it says known X's. So that would be our period. Close the parenthesis. And now do a control shift enter and it will fill in that entire column. You may have more decimal places showing. If so, if it's a bit distracting, you could reduce your number of decimal spaces. Okay. Um, like I said, what I just showed you will always work. Now on some computers, including the one I'm sitting at right now, you could actually have just clicked in this first cell and have typed that trend function and hit enter and it would have gone and filled in the rest here. So if you're interested you could see if that works on your computer or not. But I'll assume that that uh, that, that doesn't work and I'll continue to show it the long way. Okay, now as I said there is a formula for mean square error which can be used to compare models. In a moment, I'm going to do a model called the quadratic trend. So let's do the mean square error for the trend model first. So type in that cell there to the right of my label MSC. Do an equal sign. And now look at the yellow text box I have. I've converted this formula into some very easy to use Excel commands. The first is sum MXMY2 which stands for sum x minus y squared, which is exactly what the numerator would be here. Now, for the, the uh, denominator, in theory, you know, that's just n, which would be like the number of rows here. You could count them manually, but in a long spreadsheet, it would be much easier to use a formula. Plus, if you wanted to, to update this, um, another good reason to use a formula. And the formula count, if you take do count and then like select the column, it simply tells you how many how many rows you have in that column. So all right, well I have the equal sign up. I'll start looking for the sum. By the time I type in SUM, I see a bunch of formulas beginning with SUM up here. 
uh, you will probably see, as I do here, sum x m y squared is the last of the sum functions. Now when we select that, it says array x, array y. Basically, as I explained up here, it'll be your data and your predicted data. So in other words, it will be your production values and the values you just generated using your trend function. And uh, by the way, it doesn't matter which you list first. Comma, order won't matter. Now close your parentheses, do um, a division, a slash symbol, and then type um, count to pull up that. And uh, for count, in the yellow box, just to list something, I said use your data values. But in fact, notice the data and the trend, the same number of rows. So it won't really matter which of these rows you select there. And I'll close that parenthesis. Okay, and uh, hit Enter. And we get an MSE of 171. We'll see a little bit more in just a few minutes, like the ramifications of all of that. Okay. Um, what the heck? Just for the moment. It'll only take a second. Let's choose, just let's select those three columns and let's insert the chart here. Let's do a scatter uh, chart with smooth lines. I'll do that. So that would be, I'll label it Trend Model. Just clicked in that box that said Chart Title. Change it to Trend. So let's just put it here. Keep it handy. And notice that the uh, blue curve line shows the actual data, the production data. And the, I guess that's perhaps orange, is showing our Trend Model. A straight line which is used to predict that. Now it does have some predictive value. Obviously both those lines are increasing as they go to the right, but there may be situations where that's, that's just too rough of an approximation and you'd like to try to come up with a model that fits it a little bit better. Well a quadratic trend model is a nice one to reach for when you see that you have some smooth curve. You know, think of this as being maybe a little bit like the right hand side of a very wide parabola. Uh, that's why I said a quadratic trend model fits a parabolic curve to the data. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually not very difficult. What I'd like to do is, you know, remind you that right now when we did the trend model, period was our x value. Well, a quadratic equation has not only um, a potential x value, it has an x squared value. So if this is x, what we want to do is insert a column here which will represent x squared. So click on B and let's go and uh, insert there. And I'll label this. This will be period, um, period squared. So this is x and this is now our x squared. And the way we fill this in is just by doing an exponent on our on our keyboard. So uh, for the first um, one there with the 1, we want to square that. So click on the cell holding the 1. Use your caret sign for exponentiation. That's Shift 7. Or rather Shift 6. And then squared. Go ahead and of course that's not very um, a very good test yet because 1 squared is just 1. But let's copy that formula down make sure we're doing it correctly. Yeah, and that looks all good. 7 squared, for instance, is 49 here. Now what a quadratic trend model does is we can actually use the same command we did for the linear trend model. Um, it's just when we go to choose our x's, instead of just choosing the period numbers, we will choose both the x and the x squared, meaning this whole rectangle here. So let me show you. Again, using the uh, method that should work on any of your computers, I'll, I'll highlight those values. I, rather, I select them, I should say. Um, I don't click, do equal sign. Don't click first. So trend. Okay, so known-wise, 
Now, remember our known y's aren't these trend values. Our known y's, we have to go back to the original data, the production, comma, and then known x's. So here, as I was just saying a minute ago, you're not just going to select the values in uh, column A. You're going to select the x and the x squared, meaning the, these values here in, in columns A and B. So close the parenthesis and now do a uh, control shift enter and it fills them all in there. So let's go and see if in fact uh, we do have something that fits the original data better. We're going to do that two ways. First we're going to calculate the mean square error. A better fit should give us a smaller number than the 171. All right, so we'll do equal and pick out the last of those um, sum functions. Array x, array y. Now look in the green box. We want to be taking our data and subtracting our approximation. So our data is production, comma, and our approximation would this time around be the quadratic trend approximations. Uh, then we can do divide, and we can do count. And again, all these columns uh, have the same number of rows, so it won't matter much what you go in, which one you go and select. I just randomly picked one of them. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see that that 14.5 is a heck of a lot smaller than the one we got a moment ago. So that tells you mathematically that it has a superior fit. Uh, of course, well, let, let's go and do a, another graph. It'll give us a nice visual confirmation. So um, I'm going to select the uh, entire grid there. Select my smooth chart. And let's just do a little bit of work with that. Um, this time I'm just going to use it for the quadratic trend. So I'll put a new Chart title on that. Oh, left off the last letter. Trend. Okay, and let's let's go on this and let's maybe get rid of it. There's too much clutter there. So click somewhere uh, on this and it brings up the funnel. And let's have it just show our data, which is produ um, production and our quadratic trend. So that, let's get rid of the other things. And there we are. And notice, compared to the trend model, our production and our quadratic trend are agreeing uh, much more nicely. So why might that be important? Well, um, if we want to make a projection for, say, <coughs> excuse me, for, say, <coughs> for another period or two, it looks like the quadratic trend would do a better job of doing that. So why don't I actually remind you how to uh, do that. All right, um, I think I'll go and add a row and maybe a couple. Just move that MSC down a little bit lower. So um, let's suppose that we wanted to go out two more periods and make, make some predictions. First of all, off, you do want to go and update column A with those two periods, and it does automatically square the next column. Okay, now since we saw the quadratic trend model was superior, let's do our projections there. So what you can do is select these two values that you want to generate equal sign, pull it trend. Now, here's where you want to be careful. Known Y's. Those are our known production values. When it says after that, known X's, our known X's, since this is a quadratic model, would be both columns A and B, and only fill that out to the same row you stopped at before. 13 and 14 are not known x's, they're ones we want to find. So you do a comma again, 
And although we didn't use this before, the next thing we want to do is our new X's. So that's where we would select columns A and B, rows 14 and 15 here. We want to select these new values. Now close your parentheses and do Control Shift Enter. And so notice that it has project made two projections for us, two periods out into the future about 119.6 and 144.3. I won't bother doing the projections for the trend because if we look at the graph, look what would happen here if we did periods thir 13 and 14. It would give, give us a straight line. And that would probably be much lower than the actual values, which would probably be like somewhere up here. Okay, well, uh, had a, a quick look at the trend and the quadratic trend. Again, I hope that's helpful. Good luck.